If state governors thought they were going to spend the palliative funds without giving account, well, they better think again because with all the gory stories and images emanating from different parts of the country on the palliative distribution setup, has done exactly what most Nigerians would want done, and that is a detailed account of spending of the funds. That's our first hot topic on the breakfast this morning as Sarah joins us later on in the show. As the G20 summit ends in India, India's roadmap to economic growth and lessons for Nigeria is what we'll be looking at on the show this morning. We'll also be taking a look at Up the Press, where we take a look at some of the headlines that made it to the front pages of some national dailies. Our analysts will be joining us at that time on the show to dissect them one after the other. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Menongwe Zigwe. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. Very good morning to you. It's a Monday morning and we're hoping that your mindset this mon morning is going to be a very positive one. That's what we do every Monday. It's Mindset Monday. So what is your mindset <laughs> right now? Are you, are you thinking you're a failure? Are you thinking you're suffering more than everybody in the world? Are you thinking that everything is not working for you? <laughs> but guess what? As scripture says, everything works together for good for those who love God. So the first question you ask yourself is, do you trust in a higher being than just you? And then do you put in as much effort as you need to put in to make things work for better for you? Indeed. You know, yesterday was um, World Suicide um, Awareness Day. Mm -hmm. And it all starts with the mind, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Someone who decides or thinks or believes that it's all over ends it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, you see, no matter how bad it is, you are not facing the worst situation. Mm -hmm. right? there's, there's this story that we're telling us when we were growing up of someone who wanted to commit suicide. He had one banana left, so he took it up the tree with the rope, and then he said, okay, let me just eat this banana and then end it all because I'm suffering too much. He went up the tree and then peeled the banana, threw the peel down, ate the banana, and when he looked down, there was someone who was picking the peel and eating and just, just laughing and just saying, thank God that I have a banana peel mm -hmm. that is not banana. And it was like, okay, I had a banana and I was thinking it was the worst. Someone is eating the peel and is feeling happy. So whatever situation you find yourself, there are people who are praying to get to that situation where you are and, but you are there already and you're thinking all is over. But it's the mindset. Tell yourself that everything will be all right. Last, last, everything will be all right, like we said. All right, it's time for us to give you the top trending this morning. And we'll begin with the story about... All right, they're, they're scrolling it up for me. <laughs> and the early intercepts 399 pieces of improvised explosive devices um, it was recovered by operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. From one Asana Leke, 39-year-old, along the Mokwa Ajeba, uh, Mokwa Ajeba Road on Thursday, September 7th, the suspect who said the explosives were handed to him at a park in Ibadan, your state, uh, it's to be delivered to someone in Kaduna State has since alongside the exhibits been transferred to the military authorities in Niger State. NDLEA spokesperson Femi Baba Femi made the development known on Sunday and revealed that NDLEA operatives also intercepted consignments of skunk concealed in tomato paste and methamphetamine hidden in used clothes meant for export to Dubai, the United States, the United Arab Emirates, a consignment of 556 grams of Canadian loud from Canada meant for one Tunji Adebayo in Ikorodu, Lagos, was also intercepted by the NDLA officers. 
of the Directorate of Operations and General Investigation attached to courier firms. The Adebayo was not home when operatives visited his house at number 52 Aino, Otoloyo Street, Ikorudu. He, however, directed his younger brother to sign for the package on his behalf. All right, so NDLEA working, it's almost on a weekly basis, you get to hear of drugs. Yeah, drugs, and <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. I don't, not funny, rather. It's, uh, it's scary, the, the amount of drugs that are in circulation, drugs that should not be in circulation, that are in circulation. And I wonder how these drugs get into the country, because most of them are not produced in the country. I understand that there are some crude ones, you know, that people sm smoke and uh, get as high as anything you can think about. But the ones that are being imported into the country, how do they get through our borders? How do they, how do they cross into the country and uh, abuse the way they are abused? And I keep asking myself, what is the reason for the abuse of drugs? Is it because, will, you, will we also blame it on the fact that people have no jobs? If you have no job, how do you buy the drugs? Mm -hmm. So if you have something... And why is consuming of yes. hard drugs the way to go? Yes. If you so do not, how is that a solution? Let's, let's find, the find problem. out why people really take these drugs the way they do. And if there is a solution in that regard, we, we try to, to provide a solution. Because clamping down is good, but if it is something that we can correct without even necessarily having to clamp down on because if, if you if i drink beer for instance because of a particular x y z reason then you remove the x y z reason i wouldn't need to buy the beer anymore so instead of destroying the cartons of beer, you know we're just talking just, about mindset. Yeah, yeah it's mindset it's about mindset i mean so many people have different reasons why um they need to feel good and because most times you find that the reason why they take this thing is because they want to feel high. High from high what? For, high for what? <laughs> and high for what? Yeah. So it's a mindset thing. Why is hard drugs uh, the only reason or the only means of feeling high for you when others could look for other ways of feeling good? It's, so it's, it's... And then the peddlers themselves have become quite creative. Mm -hmm. I mean, in toothpaste... I mean, a uh, 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 tomato it paste. Shows, it shows tomato paste. Slippers, uh, tomato paste, everything you're putting in cream that people apply on their body. And noodles, They're package very, of noodles, very baby creative. dolls and different things. And when you hear some of the ingenious means through which they peddle these drugs, mm -hmm. you'd say... These people are so, I mean, if they had channeled such thoughts, such imagination, mm. such energies into creating more positive things, they probably would be better off. Yeah, like I wonder how someone will spend all night doing Yahoo when that same all night could be used to mine Bitcoin, mm -hmm. which is legal. So why are you spending it on the negative? Did you say Bitcoin? I mean, well, Bitcoin, <laughs> cryptocurrency, a lot of them trade in the night because the countries that really do the business, yeah. uh, their time difference is, you know, it, it falls in the night for us here. Mm. So a lot of people who do that uh, are night crawlers. Yes, I, you just reminded me of the three boys, three brothers that were sentenced in Turkey to 11,000 something something years each over... They're into cryptocurrency. Did they, did they believe in reincarnation or something? <laughs> 11,000 years. 11,000 something something years. I don't know how they Itch. do I don't know how they do their own cryptocurrency, but as far as I know, even though it's not the mainstream thing, it is still legal. It may not be acceptable uh, by some government like Nigeria was trying to guard against it because they said um, uh, monitoring and supervision and all that is needed and they have not had those kind of uh, uh, things that will make them monitor the people well, but it doesn't make it illegal like the Yahoo that we know Because there are countries that you can still use cryptocurrency to pay for some services Yeah, so if that is that can be done. Why are you using your night hours eight hours ten hours in the night? Just to do crime The same hours that you can use to do something legal and there are some other things that you can do apart from cryptocurrency yeah. on the internet and you're using it for the wrong reasons. And for those who are needing or who feel they need to take hard drugs to feel high, please think of other means of getting high. Just be Most happy. Most people get high. Just be happy, yes. <laughs> I mean, if they think getting high is a thing, 
obviously is a thing for it to be uh, so lucrative. That means so many people believe they need to get high. So, but if you're one of those who feel you need to get high, look for more healthy ways, healthier ways of getting high. I mean, uh, you know, a bottle of palm wine. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it's, it's also, uh, even though we're saying this, but it's also wrong to think that if you get drunk, because that's not what she's saying, if you get drunk, your sorrows will go away. They will be waiting for you at the no. other end of being sober. So any moment of sobriety that you have, you go back Palm to your wine, problems. So, red wine, so, white so wine. think of any, ways. Think yeah, of they, ways they, to they get happy. you to, they, you know, just for relaxation. You know, social drinkers. There are social drinkers who drink to just relax and just with friends and just relax after I had this job, uh, not to get drunk. You don't have to get drunk to be happy. You don't have to get high to be happy. You don't need to forget reality yeah. to be happy because guess what? When that high fades off, reality is waiting for you. So there's no escape from reality. So why delude yourself with hard drugs? It's just, it doesn't make sense. It's really delusional. Yeah. Um, they, one of the greatest sayings is that happiness is a choice. So if you choose to be happy, you wouldn't need all these things that you think will make you uh, high. Why would you even be high? To impress somebody, to do one or th two things. And the funny thing is, uh, one of the reasons I don't drink alcohol is the fact that I knew from, from childhood, or at least I felt from childhood, that I might be someone in the, the, the public eye maybe a musician, maybe a footballer, maybe just things that I was doing and all that. Mm -hmm. And I said, if I have to do any of these things, I have to be with my clear eyes. Mm -hmm. Let me own whatever I do. Let me re be responsible for any action I take on stage or anywhere. For, unfortunately, these are some of the things that make people drink. Mm -hmm. you, want, you, you don't want to be with your clear eyes. You just want to do things and get the results, no matter how you got there. Yeah, there you are on TV. Right. I'm doing it with clear eye. Uh, yes, I'm doing it with clear Although eye. Although I also I, I drink, drink alcohol. Yeah. I, I don't get drunk, but I drink alcohol. I'm I like palm wine. Bad thing. Yeah, I like palm wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it live on national television. I like palm wine. Yeah. And I so like, you I know, like so please avoid I avoid hard drugs. And I inside there. I go bury myself. <laughs> I hope you won't bury yourself inside. There. God for me. But another story is uh, also that uh, the deputy um, CBN governor Aisha Ahmed uh, has been arrested by the DSS. You remember that. Uh, uh, the central bank governor has been arrested or had been arrested uh, before. Now she is, the deputy is arrested over alleged fraudulent acquisition of shares in Polaris Bank and Titan Bank, or it used to be Union Bank. Uh, DSS spokesman Peter Afunaya told uh, Channel Television on Sunday that he could not confirm or deny that Ahmad is in their custody or has been invited for questioning and i wonder how that is that you uh, the spokesman cannot say that meanwhile according to reports making the rounds aisha is also being interrogated on how 300 million dollars was raised by titan bank to complete the acquisition of union bank in 2022 now speaking on the development afunaya stated that in the course of any investigation people can be invited for questioning and those invitations are carried out within the ambit of the law. And uh, this comes roughly two months after the Secret Service arrested Ahmad's former boss, uh, the suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Gatwin Emefiele, and initially charged him with possession of firearms before later being charged with a 6.9 billion naira fraud. Now, uh, these things are happening and uh, we do not even know what it is because uh, the uh, they CBN former boss is still in custody. Can I just pause to, just, that is the face of money. You look at her. <laughs> that is the face of money. She's looking good. They're swimming money. I mean, yeah, but, but uh, she's you, been swimming in money. You don't have to be fraudulent to, to look moneyish as it is. But um, this is not saying that um, we are very sure that the accusations are correct, but this is the, the news. It's making the rounds that she's been arrested, even mm -hmm. though DSS is saying they do not know whether she's in custody or not. I, I wonder how someone will be brazenly say that a spokesperson of an organization doesn't know if someone has been invited or is in their custody. What are they waiting for before they give us this information? If you just say she's not there, she's not there. If you say she's there, she's there. Why are you keeping it from us? But 
you know, first of all, Godwin Emefiele was arrested, detained because of uh, possession of firearms. And suddenly they, they didn't find any need to use that as a case against him. And now we're talking about fraud of so many millions. Yeah, it became, you know, that Emefiele situation is one that was really, really, in my opinion, badly handled because um, it, it became so clear that it, this is witch hunt. Mm -hmm. because of you know the narrow redesign that affected certain people during the elections and all of that because the Mephila really did have cases to answer to Nigerians he had answers questions to give to us uh, answers to give to us because we had lots of questions to ask him about some of the policies that were taken under him uh, during his tenure and especially with regards to the narrow redesign which made Nigerians suffer many lost their lives as a result of the, the way it was implemented. And so to not charge him with possession, illegal possession of firearm, a man of his caliber, you know, was, as far as some of us were concerned, it bungled the chance to get this man to actually answer questions, tough questions about his tenure in office. And so I guess I wasn't the only one, I'm sure. And the outcry against such mishandling of such a high-profile case mm -hmm. must have been the reason why they came up with the latest charge against him, which is fraud. So at the time that they held him for a charge that was not supposed to be, was that even right? Was that even legal? Because this thing, it's, he was, let's say, innocent of, of, of the charges that were leveled against him at the first instance. And now you're just saying, OK, we found another one, so just stay in detention. And in the, in the first place, if someone is in office and is, is making policies, uh, best you can do is remove him. It's not a crime to bring a policy, no matter how bad that policy might be. Just remove him if you're no longer comfortable and bring better policies from someone else or bring someone else who will bring better policies and all that. So he redesigned the Naira. It was his right to do so. But Nigerians suffered, yes. But you can't jail him for that kind of a thing, at least in interaction with, with some lawyers who've got to know that. You can't jail him for those kind of policies except something that he really committed. If this fraudulent um, case is really proven, then it was bad. You can, you, can, you, can, you can put him in jail because of that. You can prosecute him because of that, but not for the policies that he made that maybe some people uh, didn't find comfortable. Yeah, it wasn't handled smoothly, which was why I said was, initially yeah, that it was, it was really, beginning to look like a witch yes. hunt. Uh, because of the illegal ways in which the pro process took place. And this DSS, uh, sorry to say, but DSS lately has been, has been very unprofessional, if you ask me. Yeah. Okay, every, after, before every landmark um, happening in Nigeria, you'll find them. We have information that some people want to do this, want to do that. I, I mean, if you have, if you have, evidences just go ahead and get those people who are trying to foment trouble prosecute them and do what you need to do but here like Bonner boy will say you go explain tire <laughs> no yeah, such announcements or pronouncements know. from them oftentimes appear to be, be with the motive of creating some sort of tension yeah because and, the, and the, the propaganda exactly if you had such an information um, about something that serious people would expect that they should go ahead and apprehend those mm -hmm. who are posing such threats to the public instead of throwing it out there and making people panic and wonder where is this going to happen where is this going to come from and so going forward we hope that uh, they will do something about the way they operate security security is one very turning issue that um, a lot of the information that uh, security people know, they don't give it to the public because it will cause, like you said, panic. And panic in a polity, panic in a community is not good. There are some things that you try to avoid and too much information given to the people is not very, uh, it's not being security conscious and being professional about it, if you ask me. So DSS, just do the needful. If you, if you have to apprehend somebody, hold him in custody or do one or two things or warn him personally that we know that you're going to do this, stop giving us the information that will make us fear rather than just survive and do our thing the way we need to do it. <clears throat> All right, so you're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Remember that we're taking a look at Serap.
Serap has given the state governor's ultimatum to give details of the spending of the palliative money they've gotten. We'll also be taking a look at the G20 that just ended uh, you know, on the 10th of this month. We want to find out um, how it's impacting or can impact Nigeria, Africa, and of course, India's mm. global uh, relations. How has it impacted it? Uh, so we want to stay and see the total package that we have for you today. Right now, we'll take a short break and come back with all the press. What are those stories that made it to the front pages of some national dailies? You're about to find out in a moment. Stay with us.